Hey folks, thanks for joining me today. In today's tutorial, we're going to be doing the other horse of the soul symbol for August. So the beginning is the same as, as the last one. If you saw it, you can fast forward through this part. Um, or you can just watch it again and refresh on how it's done. So um, this is a stone that I created from the Happy Dotting Company molds that I received from uh, Angela at the Happy Dotting Company. I've left a link in the description below. So if you'd like to go and get a mold of your own, definitely go and check out her shop in Etsy. Um, so what I did was I um, did a base coat of white on the rock and then I'm using some greens. Uh, use the dark green on the outside and then I lighten it up uh, for the inside and then I blend it from the middle of the rock out to the edge. Uh, that way I get a nice transition from the light to dark of the color of this is green or per peridot I think is the name of the um, uh, of the stone for August. Correct me if I'm wrong, like I'm not always the greatest for, you know, uh, saying the right word uh, or I put my own sort of accent on it, I guess. So uh, please correct me if I'm wrong um, and just please um, accept my apologies if I've really butchered that. Anyway, so uh, I just continue with my finger sponges. Um, going from light to dark and then this is one of the new blending brushes that I purchased on Amazon and I'm just adding a little bit of a lighter layer in the middle and then just blending it with my finger sponges all the way through. Now what I've also got to do is put on some glitz and glamour so I'm putting on a top coat of um, it's like a varnish but it has glitter in it so it makes it uh, shine like a gem which is what I was going for then what I do is I paint the rest of the rock black so I go up as tightly as I can to the gem itself um, so then it's more of the vocal point and I will be doing a gold frame around it like I have with all of my other ones and I just use the black paint to sort of set it off or to um, make the gem stand out even more. I do also paint the back of the stone black, um, but I'm not gonna show you that part just like the other one because it's boring. Um, but anyways, so um, there are times you make mistakes like I just did there. Uh, when the paint is wet, I just take a Q-tip and I uh, dip it into some water and just rub away what is there that I don't want there and then I just repaint over top of it. I do it again in this video later on when I'm working on the horse and uh, so you'll get to see it again where I use the, I just add a little bit of water uh, to the Q-tip and I wipe it off and redo it. So very simple to do, to do an easy cleanup and then um, it looks beautiful in the end. Uh, so here I am, as you can see, doing the, uh, the gold frame around the gem and it's looking really good. So as soon as I get this part done, this is where the video changes because I'm going to be doing a different horse. And this one, I'm so excited to bring to you guys because I was so happy with how it turned out. I will admit after editing the video as I was going along, it looked really, mm, it didn't look the greatest until it got near the end. And wow, just you've got to watch because this is, it's just, it's beautiful. It's one of my favorites. Um, and I just was so happy on how it turned out. Now, just to give you um, the soul symbol meaning for the horse for August, um, the meaning is uh, you're like the free spirited horse. You run free in the wild, always embarking on adventures. And absolutely everybody I know that has a birthday in August, this is definitely describing them. So um, again, it's the same soul symbol as my previous video. But this time I'm doing a different type of horse. My other horse that I did was more of like a Celtic or tribal kind of horse. This one, I'm making it look more realistic. 
So you just watched me uh, sort of sketch it on and I use my new blending brush blending brushes on this quite a bit. These things are absolutely amazing. I found them on Amazon and there is a link in the description below. So if you want to scoop some up for yourself, um, just hit that link and you can go and get them yourself off of Amazon. But I'm telling you, these things are amazing. Um, one thing I did find out that I'm going to warn you now is don't leave them in your cup of water overnight because even though the handles are coated with plastic, they're wood inside. And when wood gets wet, it swells and it split all of my handles. So that's just, um, you learn from my mistake. Don't leave them in the, in the cup of water overnight. Um, so just to catch you up on what I've been doing. So I put on a base coat of um, a darker color brown. Um, I think it was like a maple brown. Um, all of my my colors and the brands that I use in this tutorial will be listed in the description below. So if I do get it wrong, it will be right down below. So have a look there uh, for the colors that I used. But I did use a darker brown um, and then uh, went over top of it with a lighter brown. And I wasn't too crazy about making sure that it was blended because I really wanted the darks and the lights. And in, if you ever look at a horse in real life, they don't have like one solid color. They've got multiple colors in their hair. So that's what I was trying to go for. Um, now what I'm doing is I'm really emphasizing uh, the shadowy part. So like the cheekbone and where the neck meets the cheekbone. Um, so I'm just using my fine lining brush and I'm painting on there and then blending it all uh, through so it's more of a nicer transition and I just keep doing this um, so uh, I do everywhere that I can think in my mind where there's going to be a shadow or like if the light source is coming from the top right of the rock and it's shining down on the horse then all of the uh, shadows should be on the bottom left so that's what I was trying to go for and of course, a horse has got to have a beautiful blaze on their forehead. So that's what I did here. And I just used my blending brush and blended it all in. And I, like, I'm just amazed with this one. Like, you, you got to keep watching. You got to watch to the end because this turned out so amazing. I was so happy about it. Let me know if you like this video by giving me a thumbs up. And make sure you subscribe to my channel. I try to post every Friday. I sometimes throw in extra posts in between. So being subscribed is going to uh, help you keep up to date on it. As well, if you don't want to miss anything, ring the bell and that will give you a notification when I do post new things. So definitely subscribe, uh, ring the bell and give me a thumbs up if you really like this video. So I'm still working on uh, doing some shadows and some lights uh, by using my fine lining brush and then I go in with one of my little blending brushes uh, because uh, I really want to make sure that the the dark areas or the shadowed areas are really defined because that is what's going to make it look realistic. Um, having your lights and your darks in the right areas is really going to be the make or break part to make this realistic. So that's what I'm trying to go for here. Um, I could have gone with something cartoony, but I really wanted to do something like this. Um, I've been excited about doing this one for quite some time when I learned that August was a horse. Uh, so um, I really hope that you've liked it uh, as much as I have uh, putting it together for you. Um, so as you've been watching me, I've been uh, doing some blending, um, both with uh, darks and lights. There you just saw me use a... Um, paper towel with that had a little bit of water on it because I had I guess over brushed if that's a word um, with my uh, with my fine lining brush there when I was doing the no the nostril so I just used the little tip of the um, paper towel and just dabbed it off and it works just well now it, it looks like it's black that I'm using here but it's actually not it's a very very dark brown I think it's walnut um, but again, I just wanted to keep with the brown part of like the horse itself and uh, to really use uh, the browns rather than a black. A black would be a little bit too 
uh, pronounced, I think. So now in the eye, I do use black. Um, and uh, I'm just continuing to outline just to give more definition, like where the neck comes down and it gives the illusion that the horse is actually standing one way and facing the same way that it's standing. So it, it kind of has that appearance of uh, like the neck crease that's down into its chest. Um, Got to add some extra eyelashes there on the far side. So uh, horses eyes are on either side of their head. Um, so you definitely have to, you know, put those eyelashes in there because you got to let people know they've got two eyes. Um, so yeah, so I just continue, uh, working away. Um, this is a, a technique that I do that where I will put in the back, back color first and I paint it solid and then I can do fine detail work. So that's what I did with the eyeball there. I put it in as black and then I put in the white. Um, I will be going in and making the eye as well, but this is the fun part, doing the mane. I just threw colors on. Any color that was within the horse that I could blend together, and while the paint was still wet, I went in with like the next color and then the next color. And you'll see me do this throughout um, on doing the mane, but it really gives the appearance of like the wispiness and to have layers and different colors and you can really make the direction of the hair go the way that you want by adding these extra layers and so that's what I did and I was just free with it I really really had no rhyme or reason as to where I was putting the mane uh, or the forelock that's on the front of the the horse there um, I just, I wanted it very wispy and sort of like it looked like it was blowing in the breeze or he had just flung his head around the one side, just, just to give it a little bit of motion. So here's where I did that mistake there uh, on the ear and I just used a Q-tip with a little bit of water. So you get two of those in this video to show you how you can clean up your mess. Um, not really a mess, more of like a oops and you can clean it up really quickly. So now I'm just using um, a little bit of the dark brown and I think I added just a touch of black into it and then I watered it down so that the paint would uh, sort of glide across the painting a lot easier than um, if it was just solid paint. Uh, and I just, you know, make these little wispies all over the place and just make the horse look so beautiful. Um, and I continue uh, doing this and adding in some some more shading and some shadows and I got to make the definition in the ear there. Um, I also do a bit of dry brushing. If you're not familiar with that technique, basically it you take the majority of the paint off of your brush and then just sort of uh, sweep it over top of your painting and it's like a dry brush technique and it gives it more of, um, it's not as solid, it's uh, more softer. So uh, if you're interested in learning more about doing a dry brush technique, uh, let me know in the comments below. I'll certainly uh, come up with a, a nice video that uh, can show you how to do the dry brush technique. Um, and when you do send me um, a comment in the comment section below, I read them all. Not only do I read them all, I'm trying my best to answer them all. And I've been making notes on all of your suggestions and things like that. So um, just know that I have a lot of comments that you guys have done. I love them all. Thank you very much. And I do have a list of things that I'm going to do for you. So stay tuned for that. Make sure that uh, you're, you've got the bell so that you'll get notifications when I post those. Um, so as I'm doing right now, I'm just finishing it off by putting in some green dots and just to frame it up and uh, then it's off for some resin and um, I had so much fun doing this I'm so happy to share it with you and uh, yeah I'm I'm just impressed so uh, that's about it folks so life is what you make it so get creative <laughs>